Alright, that's 10 seconds. And that's all, all the patience I have. Welcome back to Drawing Blood. Uh, episode 21 or 20, depending on who's counting. It's, we're going to uh, try something new today, too. So. Yeah, and we are trying something new. Uh, instead of the co-hosting, with, we got a microphone, him all mic'd up, too. I'm Chris Burns, uh, one of the animators for Blood, and Bob Fox is to my right. I'm working and on some backgrounds. He's working on backgrounds. So our audio is messed up. Our right? audio might be messed up. Yeah, <laughs> so let us know if this anything's too loud because my speakers aren't working. Though our chat's open and we can hear you and see you and all that kind of stuff. Well, we can't hear you, but we can see you. Um, so we're going to work on sprites today because we're trying to tighten up our demo for blood. Uh, for a few festivals coming up. We want to fill it out with as much animation as we can. I got an ad for Modern Warfare 4. Obviously. Yeah. Oh. That doesn't go with us, but I guess so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is, is that from... Um, oh, first. When, you, when you're live, oh, when you're going to toy Okay, I didn't know that. It's okay. We'll take it. How are you doing, Arrow? Will, and let us, Arrow, Will, if you could let us know if the audio or the music's too loud or it's not loud enough because my speaker's all wonky, so let me know if anything's going on with that. Uh, so what I was saying is we're trying to fill out um, the hallway scenes when you get into the school as, uh, like, as busy as we can. We're not busy. We're just trying to make it very lively, so we're kind of in been working with uh, kind of character animation and sprites and stuff. Uh, those of you who saw the Twitch post I sent earlier, pull that up, and I'll show you how I set that one up. Character, and she was a teacher. So this is sort of how I set up the sprite right here. Her name's Miss Vernon. This is the three-quarter angle. And this is for Cody to kind of itemize what we're doing here. Uh, all these are individual animations embedded. I duplicate and, and um, switch out the animation so everything's registered. And then I'll try to put something on the bottom of there. You can see her walking back and forth of all the sprites kind of lined up in one, trying to get her animated there. So if you go inside of each of these things, the game is going to be a hit. Oh, thank you. This gameplay doesn't sell what the animation will. <laughs> well, that's up to that's up that's to Cody. Cody. I hope the animation sells it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, Cody and Andrew are doing a fantastic job. So and Andrew's doing a fantastic. And job. Andrew's doing a fantastic job. Cody's a solid C minus, maybe a C plus. So um, this is the idle animation. Let's see here, I kind of have. Just, we just try to keep everything sort of lively, uh, kind of character-driven stuff. So we'll we'll have her kind of looking around. She's one of these stern teachers that we're not exactly sure if she is good or bad or indifferent. And that's for the gameplay to decide. Uh, so each one of these has separate animation in it. It's the walk cycle. Kind of talking. Okay. Being stern. And then these ones are kind of weird looking, but they're just sort of um, to transition. So if you're walking and then you need to transition to a stop, you would go from walk to walk idle to idle, uh, talk to idle, idle to walk, and walk to talk. And uh, the bottom is the byproduct. The center and the moon. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, We're doing it all on ones. Well, no. <laughs> ones and twos. <laughs> But Not the quite. bottom right here is sort of the byproduct of what you would get. And, so, you know, if we put her in front of a chalkboard or, say, even um, a door, like in the hallway, we kind of have this little animation ready. So Arrow will was saying, it's so going to be a vampire. That's our... That's well, that our, sort of, yeah. It might be a misdirect. Go. We don't know. We She's give her the Bram, the Bram, Bram Stroker, Stroker <laughs> hair, hair piece and the eyes in, would indicate it. But I also grabbed colors from the evil stepmother from um, Cinderella and stuff. And that's sort of how we do it. We pay homage to a lot of things and it doesn't necessarily have to be the 80s or 90s. Lauren, Lauren's here. We got Lauren mm. in here again. Oh, Lauren, we saw your finished um, animation you sent yesterday. That was, that was fantastic. It looked great. All the shading and stuff looked really beautiful. Good job on that. That was a quick turnaround, too. 
So what I'm going to do now is switch gears and move over to the hallway kids. So you get into a hall. Let me open up uh, backgrounds that Bob did. I have that open actually. Oh. Nope. What I just opened. And if you have any questions about backgrounds, uh, Bob's mic'd up today, so you, you won't just hear him in the peanut gallery. Uh, where am I here? BGR hallway. And it was open anyway. So this is how Bob's been setting all, all this stuff up. And then we can take each one of these elements and they're set up as tiles and sprites, and then we can kind of organize them and then program them correctly and each one of these has animation in it too so a door will have openings closings open each way a box you can break open uh, you can turn on the water fountain and there's a lot of little things you can kind of play around with this that don't, don't seem to be programmed yet they're not programmed yet but <laughs> They'll get there, Do it perhaps. Um, so you get. So Bob works at a hundred percent, and I work at four hundred percent. Meaning these sprites will be shrunk down to twenty-five percent. Oh, it's not even complete yet. I can't wait to see the full thing then. What uh, is that for? I, I'm sure I asked this last week uh, for Lauren. Is that for a short you're working on, or just practice, or um, what's it going to be for? one of your shorts. While she's answering me, I um, I grabbed some of these characters from the bus. And we're going to kind of set them up in front of the locker. And a lot of our sprites are just for practice. Oh, good for you. You don't see a lot of that now. Um, so a lot of our sprites are sort of scene specific. Um, I don't know if we'll get a lot of reuse out of this character in front of another locker. But uh, we'll eventually probably get like a few of them with walk cycles and talk cycles and all that kind of stuff. But right now we're just sort of building it up how we did the bus almost. Let me open up the bus now for those who haven't played the game. So you see this is a scene specific scene, meaning we probably won't get to use a lot of these sprites anymore, but this is very specific to the scene where you're walking around the bus and talking to people, so this is gonna play super slow. So all these characters are sort of interacting with each other. Um, as you can see, I probably won't get to use this guy in this pose again, so we're gonna have to use more scene specific sprites to fill out each shot for these characters. And in the beginning, before all the you know, vampire stuff happens, we kind of need to make this feel like uh, just a regular school day. So a lot of these shots are going to be in the hallway and in the school. I found that the monthly animation challenges are good for practice. Yeah, no, anytime practice for fun, finally a time to watch one of these. Oh, well, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, cracky comics. Bob and I are also uh, ha enjoying some Friday libations. No more, uh, it it doesn't make my drawings any better, but I feel like they do by the end. You enjoy it more. I enjoy it more. So I bring Becky in here, too, to kind of size her up. She's a little smaller than everyone as our protagonist. But, um, and you can see the size changes, like, from the guy right here to there. It's the same character. But since, again, it seems specific, and I have to make things fit. So I forget what I call this guy. He's probably just character one or something. So we're going to have to eventually name this guy. So what I'll do right here... I think Greg had names for everybody, but we never... Oh yeah, yeah Greg does have names for everyone. I should look it into it. And everyone who talks has a name so far. You should make a giant poster of everybody. Mm. That's a good idea. So I'm just going to call this kid Hall... Character... Hallway... Kid Hall 1. And this is his idol animation. So he's going to be talking to this guy over here. Let me rough that guy out. Well, let's 
So we'll set this up in the game thusly too. <laughs> So again, he's quite large compared to Becky in this, so we're gonna have to shrink him down. So what I'll do is always grab the original, kind of get the head down here. We'll have a three-quarter head this time. I got that head. Try to get him the same size as Becky, a little taller. Just use that for reference. So I've got kind of a rough kind of start here. They're very top heavy, all these characters. Then I'll make put him in like a fun pose over here. So he'll be talking or leaning on the locker, depending over here. So we kind of have to line up the eyes, and then it will be Cody and Andrew's job to sort of place him in the game. That's my rush for that. And that that seems to be Cody's job. Usually. See, that's more that. Cody. Yeah. Now what I could do is even exaggerate the pose here. So I brought lockers in from Bob's thing, and he could be actually leaning on the locker. And he'll be talking first. Then I'll set up his sprite, and we're up to the races on that. I'll forego the nose a lot of times, especially with these small guys. Now, if we do a talk version, you'll eventually get a nose in this. But um, I find it muddies up sort of the sprite animation, especially with these kind of character-driven heads that we were trying to make this big canvas for. So maybe I'll... I think we can cross his legs or something. Lean that way on it. Have a leaning, I think. Do one more cleaned up version. See, I've redlined a lot of these. I just love doing these small characters too. Like, you get so much sort of done with them where if I do the large talking heads for when they actually do speak, it it takes me a lot longer. Not too concerned with the previous model. I think the colors will dictate knowing you're going to be talking to this character. Or so we hope so. Hope so. <laughs> it hasn't seemed to bother anyone yet. And you can see the size of Becky changing all the time. going to be pink and you got to know that. Or maybe I could just have him talking then he'll eventually leave. So I'll have his that arms out here. Kid? What's that? Is that the paper kid? Yeah, that's the kid who's nervous about his homework. I could even have him, if we're going to continue that story, yeah, I could have him look nervous. Maybe I'll do that. We've got a kid that's sleeping all the time. We've got... So that's it, and he's like, oh, where's my homework, or whatever. So let's clean him up. I'll separate the head, sometimes the arms and the body. In this case, I'll separate the arms and the body, because we'll shimmer the body, and I'll show you what a shimmer means. After we clean the head, it's a way to kind of maximize animation while making it look hand-drawn each time. Okay. 
So on the bus, this kid was frantically doing homework. Now, we're in school, and uh, my guess is he didn't do it right, or he's still well behind and stuff, so we're going to have him still being nervous. I use the second to last brush in MX2 for these ones. Uh, I get a lot more control with a thicker brush, actually, and it's a little easier in my hands. Uh, for reasons I can't really explain, For <laughs> when I draw with a thinner brush, I seem to press harder. Subconsciously, I guess. So now I'm going to separate that to the torso. I use shift a lot, too, since it's a lot of straight lines. So I'll, like, shift over there. Keep us on there. Maybe we'll give him a shadow here. I'll separate the arms too. And I could even duplicate that and put it on the other side. So let's color this guy. I'll just pick like a almost a purplish color for the inside of the mouth. Pink for the tongue. I'll group that. The storyboard artist at Nickelodeon draw with Sharpie markers to make sure everything <laughs> is real clear. Yeah. Well, I don't know what. I don't know what Nickelodeon's, Nickelodeon's up to. Is. They're not going to be up to much, too much longer. We don't think. Yeah, they true. might though. I, I believe you when you say that, but um, I don't know what they make the Nickelodeon artist do. But uh, the big companies are strange. <laughs> they. They tend to be more wasteful than they need to be, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it'd be weird for storyboards. I mean, I guess if you're trying to get a certain look, but also storyboards are so innocuous that, you know, you can do them rough or clean and it wouldn't matter. Character following kit two. Yeah, no, the line thickness is, it seems really thick now. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you when you zoom like. out and play it, you'll be surprised how it's you what, you what we view at 25% is what you see on the screen. And that's why we work so big, so when you shrink it, like this is what it'll look like on the screen. So you can see, uh, you know, it won't be that much. It's almost like uh, this, it, and the idea is that we're gonna match the line weight of it with the whole thing. Lauren's asking about colors. We are not good. We're not great at colors. It's our I'll just grab a pal. Look up like 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 for a uh, palette. I'll look up like something like cute purple palettes, and then a lot of stuff will just show up online, and it shows complementary colors. And then, but then I'll definitely just use a limited palette. I like using um. Uh, very limited stuff. I find when you bog too many things down with colors, it just gets a little muddy. And that's what we did with the boss too. You can see a lot of the repetitive colors, like her uh, hair color is the same as his pants color, same as his skin color, and it kind of goes throughout. So there might have been, I'm guessing, 20 colors just in this thing. Now in the backgrounds, you can do a little more yeah. muted stuff and a little more gradient-oriented stuff, but for characters, I find uh, very limited stuff to sort of be the happy medium. Where am I here? All right. So we got all these characters. Hold on, and this to you guys have the best color. Oh, thank you. You guys brought the colors. Kind of that font. Thank you. There's a ton of repeats of the characters. Yeah, not great. 
Oh, well, all right. well, maybe we do. Well, I don't know. Me and Bob look at each other. Like, we we're... sit there for a good two. We spend more time talking about colors than actually drawing sometimes. I when, Do you guys a favor? Just pick, like, 30 of your, or 32 of your favorite colors and just for, use your, like, force yourself to use them in weird ways. Like, I would have never picked this guy's skin color to be orange, but... I love the look now. You know, I would have never like sat down and like, what does this character look like? Uh, he is a chunky kid, maybe pale, but I used orange on this case, and it just sort of looked like a fun cartoon. And it doesn't even need to make sense, but it sort of does in the context of it. So he can be at this thing. So we're gonna start with the scare kid. So what I'll do is edit the symbol. Most of my idle animations run around 72 frames, which is a three second mark, and then I'll make sure to repeat it. No, that wasn't intentional, no. But Bob and I, have, he's been doing backgrounds, and then I'll grab them um, and, just, and just go to town. And most of the sprite animation, I don't even have background context unless they're very scene specific, like all Becky stuff. It's just on a gray palette. So this guy's nervous, and I did some lip sync stuff uh, last week. But I'm gonna do this one. So what I'll do is just do a bunch of different mouth shapes for this guy. We'll rough out some stuff. So we'll do a closed mouth. It could be big. Let's shrink the eyes on this one. And it, it's weird. I usually, uh, sometimes I move the jaw down, but I like to kind of play with the top of the head. It, it just pops a little different. Uh, and we did that in Flex a lot, where we we kind of like the bottom of the jaw, or, or the center of the body was almost the top of the neck, so his head popped up and down a lot, sort of like how a puppet talks. <laughs> well, thank you. That's very sweet. Maybe we're too down on ourselves, but I feel like Bob and I are constantly saying we're not good at all. I, you know, we have low self-esteem. I think a lot of artists do. You know, there's just so many, so much talent out there. You just feel like, how are you going to stand out? The eyes go up, the hair goes up. So you can see you're starting to act a little bit even though you're not talking. And I'll always sort of use this as the neutral head. So I'll have his eyes closed here. And we will go down like that. Just do a bunch of funny heads, and then we sort of in between to them. And then I'll just do like that. And so he looks pretty scared, and then we'll add some more heads, but let's start cleaning some of those up. Alright, so 400. Second to last brush. And this is going to look really thick again. Oh, toolbar went everywhere. It's nice about working this small, though. I just like, I, I love tiny characters. We did something yesterday with uh, kind of small, thick, well, prime characters. Chihuahua was, was talking about that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, social media helps and hurts at the same time. It's like you're out there with everyone else, but you're out there with it. Yeah, no, I know. And, um... Well, uh, what gets what I closely follow on social media is uh, people I graduated with at SVA and stuff, and it's a mixed bag. Some people don't even work in animation, and others are just skyrocketed to uh, like positions that seem so far ahead of mine that it's 
not embarrassing, but it's hard not to compare yourself to that. I mean, especially when I was sitting next to one of the guys who's, like, kind of running Netflix now, and then, you know, I'm sitting here working above a diner on a game for free. So. Uh, but... <laughs> But I'm drinking right now, and he's not, so... <laughs> Eggs up his face. But then there's other, um... You know, there's other animators that are exactly in the same boat that I used to work next to. And, uh... You know, I, I stay close with them. I think just out of com camaraderie. Uh, he happens to be one of my favorite animators, too. Uh, this guy, Mike Carlo. And we have very similar paths. Uh, like, we kind of had the same exact jobs our whole career, and, you know, this is spanning 19 years now. What was it? Is that, yeah, let's see, I just like the first one. Yeah, what am I trying to... Oh, my gosh, I miss so much. Well, what do you guys do when you're not working? Oh, man. Uh, Children. We have, like, we both have two kids, so we, you know, anytime we have downtime, we have to spend as much time with our families as we can we um we're constantly working at night and stuff so you know you get that guilt when you're not working um spending enough time with them especially when they're this young and you know five as a five and three-year-old or two-year-old almost three yeah almost i guess three, three and i have a four and two-year-old and it's just like you know you have to be present in their life so you have to do that so not a lot of free time unfortunately uh, do you guys use pen pressure with these lights? I do. Uh, when it's this thick, though, you can see that I'm clicking on it right here. There's a uh, pressure sensitivity. So if I wanted to get a thin line, I could get it, depending on it. I usually press pretty moderately, though. Uh, you know, one of my college roommates is at Lucasfilms now, so I <laughs> give the Galaxy's Edge, like, one of the first ones. Drinking on Uh-oh, is it? Oh, well, it is Oh no. Well, if none of you ten people tell, <laughs> we will never know. Well, this is this is a very adult stream. Good. We we're, we're making a kids game, but it doesn't mean the people making it have to be kids to play it. And this isn't Bud Light. This is just uh. It's the smooth. Yeah, it's the smooth. Um. No, so we don't get a lot of free time, but you know when works a little slow, we'll work on our personal projects, um, or, you know, right now, we're trying to all fix our houses and stuff like that, so there's a lot of that kind of, kind of stuff going on. No, I wish we had more for time. I'd love to, like, just go to the movies. I don't even know what's playing. I saw someone on my Facebook stream saying, like, Godzilla was great. I'm like, they they really made another Godzilla? Godzilla? <laughs> I had no idea. So then we'll make this and we'll do a few more mouths. Let's see. At this point I could just start animating some of these. No, I had no idea they did another Godzilla. Because I heard the last one wasn't good and how many Godzilla movies are there now? Like, if you count the Japanese oh, movies. Oh, yeah, I think I like saw some sort of massacre that they were playing that they were talking about the other night, actually. Oh, really? The, uh, James DeWolf and Tim was so many. It's so funny. I think the charm of it, though, was that it looked so artificial at first, and now it's always weird. I, I, I always have weird hang-ups about reboots, I guess. Not that I put much stock in it. I don't like when they rebooted so quick, though. Like, wasn't there a Brian Cranston version of that? Is, is, is that a sequel to that? This is the sequel. Oh, okay. That was not, okay. apparently not very well received. Well, which means we would probably like it. Like Brian Cranston. <laughs> The Dark Crystal, that's going to be enough. I haven't seen, seen I, I know of that, at least. But I haven't seen much about it. How do you keep the line at the same size so well? Like Breakfast in April? 
Uh, well, if you use the pressure sensitivity, I just, I, I'm, you know, this press is as light as I can press it. This is like as medium as I can press it, but I usually go kind of medium hard, and then you kind of just, like you would a regular pencil, I think, and then you kind of keep it at that pressure. But it, it's, we'll pick a line weight, and we want it to almost be as thick as that line weight can get. So that's how we kind of keep control of it. Plus when, you know, when you work big like this and then zoom out, you'll find that a lot of it kind of gets lost anyway. So it's not a big deal. And you know, it, some, sometimes when it wobbles a little bit, it looks more natural anyway, in my opinion. I'll do a lot of ease outs on these in-betweens too. Like I'll favor one side. Especially when it's sort of a manic character like this. That way it pops a little more. It's like those little subtle things that kind of add to these, especially when it's a small animation in a big room. Kind of want those things to stand out. We'll keep everything on the same chart. So I'm having him talk to uh, that character, character one. So I'm gonna have to coordinate these two sprites at the same time. Um, so when he's talking, the other guy's listening and vice versa. So I'm just kind of picking my battles here. Let's see. When I do a blink with these characters, I'll favor one side as well. been liking like I've been kind of doing a lot of characters lately with the mouth completely to the side a little bit of Scott Pilgrim ish kind of feel now and uh, we we actually did an animation yesterday I'll show you guys that for fun here but you see I kind of did the mouth to the side and it's very kind of in the blood kind of universe so we just made this animated loop but then we shot some live action footage of our street kind of put it in there do you have that do you have that video it should be in the um, that's same time. that's in this renders Tiny town. So this is the magic Bob can do too. You saw like there was no shading on it. And the camera shake and all that kind of fun stuff. And maybe we want to do a short where we use live action backgrounds actually. Which it actually was just we ended up using the photo. We and it was. Oh yeah, you used the photo after so. effects. I was gonna. We took some footage, but then the photo. I just ended up using a photo and doing like a camera shake to that, to make it look like it was filmed. Uh, so well, yes, we do use After Effects. Uh, we'll use Photoshop for some backgrounds. Uh, I would say. I'd say. The animation in Flash takes it about 65 to 70% of where we want it to go. You know, all the movement and the character acting and all that stuff, we all do that in Flash. You're not going to really... There's really not a lot of cheats you can do for traditional looking stuff, so we have all that. But everything else, sort of, that last stretch that really drives the animation, I think, is the attention to compositing that Bob spends a lot of time on um, I, I would you know it might benefit everyone to watch when he, you, you do something like that Bob for yeah we could do because we haven't done we're not doing much 
effects. There's not a lot of after effects in this game. You know, we could do a special Wednesday Twitch or something of just how we run a studio. I don't know how many people would tune into that. <laughs> Why you would want to run a studio no, like, like how it. we do. I would have run a studio like ours. No, unless you hate money, then you then go, go for it. I would watch. Yeah, I mean it's weird. It's you know as long as we could work on something, and I, I don't mind working on something weird. And the part that gets dicey is if we're getting paid for something. I know a lot of people don't want to see the behind the scenes stuff, but if we're doing a personal project, I don't know. You know, there, there's no secret really in our stuff. And if you guys ever have a question, just ask. It doesn't have to be on this Twitch. Just reach out on YouTube or any of that stuff. It's all just tools, you know. These are this like this. It'd be like asking a carpenter what hammer you use. It's like it doesn't matter. You just kind of use what you at your at your disposal to get the job done. I'm just gonna. I'll I'll do a combination of twos and ones too. I find if it's all on twos, it looks really robotic. If it's all on ones, it looks too digital. Uh, sometimes I settle on threes. Uh, that that looks really good, and it depends on the style of animation you're going for too. We did, we just finished uh, intro for another video game where we spent a lot of time shooting it on threes, and it looks. You know, I can't wait to show you guys that. Um, but the game's coming out soon, so we'll. I have to keep the trailer under lock and key. It's someone we met at MAGFest, though, and close to our writer, Greg. I think he's located in Brooklyn. So you see how he's down. Another he's out. Well, I think I, it, I, I would probably learn something, too, from watching Bob, because... <laughs> I move, I, so, I, I, I move so quickly through it now. I can't even. I, gosh, it's, it's, tough to it's so alien. To, you know, I first doing it when digital years. animation was, you know, at school, I knew After Effects a lot better than I do now. And that was before you know all the parenting. Well, now I would say it's about zero to zero point three percent. You know, After Effects. I know you how to turn it, it on. You well, actually, no way. You can open it occasionally. I can open it. I can open Sometimes it Sometimes you, you double click it too when many I times. And then it, I can open it. <laughs> I know how to crash it. I know how to lose the composition settings. I know how to render it three times with no audio. No, that's when I first learned it, though. I was, I was fascinated by it, but it was still when we were standing everything. <laughs> Here. Then I could jumble up these frames too. When he, I'll, I'll just grab like one of them from the middle and kind of uh, throw it in the other side of the timeline, and we'll just get to it somehow. It's kind of easy to fake this when there's no lip sync to be done. Just as the look, the appearance of talking. Chaos Tunes and After Effects. Yeah, I, I'm starting to feel that way about uh, that's my first one. About Photoshop too. I, I yeah. kind of never knew Photoshop the right way to begin with, and now when I open up someone else's file or something, I'm very lost. I love watching people draw in Photoshop though. Like when you see those timeline things, you see. I mean, it, it really is, it, like, it's a real good balance between draftsmanship and technology. But I, I also don't have the patience to ever spend that much time on one drawing <laughs> for some reason. I, guess. We keep, we I truly it. am, like, just an animator at heart in that regard. It just, when I see a lot of time being spent on just one drawing, I get, like, anxious and just get, come on, boom. But then you see something get beautifully rendered with all this soft shading and say, oh, no, well, can't do that. Favor the mouth on that side. Okay. 
All right, so let's grab some more milk. So that looks like a kind of a scared, kind of fun mouth. Now we'll just do a bunch of like open and closed mouths. So we'll go for like closed, open. Because you don't want it too repetitive. I'll make another mouth now. In Photoshop, I'm going to YouTube University for the first tutorial. <laughs> YouTube <laughs> University. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. No, it, what, what's great about the digital age, though, is you really can learn anything now. No, so, it's almost no point in schooling for that kind of I stuff. Went, yeah, there, I, I have mixed feelings about that. Like, sometimes college feels like, oh my gosh, you're just spending so much money. You could go real big here. I might have to rub this out. Get real nervous here. Uh, sometimes college can feel like a real. I mean, it could be paying student loans, or you know, if you're lucky enough to get a diploma. Um, what's it called? Job. <laughs> a job. But no, <laughs> when they give you a scholarship. No, That's why I didn't get one. <laughs> um, if you're lucky enough to get one of those, but. Gosh, it can feel like I think I did paint a, a little one for SVA. I forgot. No, I got a I got a decent one for SVA actually, but still I you know I didn't pay it until pay it off till the early thirties, right? You know, it's 10, 20 years. Um, but on the other side of the coin, I met a lot of my colleagues that helped me get work, which helped me pay for those student loans. So it's one of those sort of double edged swords and. I don't know, if I didn't go to school and try to learn everything online, I don't know where I'd be right now. Because I feel like I draw inspiration from the people I know at SVA too, so if I didn't know them, where would I be getting it? And so if you go kind of crazy here, do a bunch of funny faces. Better thin that out, I guess. You can see why we don't use model sheets. I mean, you don't really need to when you go this crazy. some of these. Uh, now I'll switch these to red probably now just so I can kind of wrap my mind around it. When I do the roughs in the same color, I get really lost sometimes, especially with this chicken scratch I just did. I'm picturing uh, when he's talking, that noise and if anyone, this is going to age me, but has anyone played uh, Kid Icarus on NES? Uh oh. Someone's in a hurry. On NES, there's a part where if you get hurt by um, the Grim Reaper, he makes this really kind of clawing sound. <laughs> I just pictured that kind of going on with this kid's mouth right now. Never, I never came close to beating that game. God, that was hard. I think I never played that one, actually. I remember the code, though, to get to the last level. 
I never earned that code, by the way. I just found it in, in Nintendo Power. Pre-internet. Way pre-internet. Very, very pre-internet. Do you ever play that game? No, I don't think I ever played. I didn't play it. You don't play a lot of Nintendo. I had it when I was little, but... Yeah, I guess I played more Super Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo was where I fell in love with video games. That's one of those games you don't hear a lot about, but that was a good game for such an old system. But man, was it hard. It was also one of those games where it's cool because you kind of, um, you scrolled up the whole time. Like it was just kind of, you were, but it was set like as a platformer. But going up. And then there was like levels where it wasn't like all of a sudden you were in kind of a dungeon all of a sudden. It's like, yeah. and when you think about like what how they had to program that back in the day, that was such a feat. I feel like. I feel like they uh, did they make another one later on for like one of the Game Boys or something. I'm, sh I know he's in like Smash Brothers and stuff like that. Like as a, um, okay. yeah, he's kind he's. He's pretty iconic. And he was in the, what's it called, the NES team or whatever, the cartoon. Oh. The yeah, Belmont team? Yeah. What was that called? The N team or something. All right, so we'll do that for a little bit. No, we could probably repeat it back. Captain N. Captain yeah, N. Who wrote that? Oh, thank you. I can't it's read that. What does that say? Uh, Captain N. Yeah. That was, that was great. it. That was the one. Really, kind of, the height of the 80s kind of, like, culminated with that cartoon. They had Mother Brain in it. They had King Hippo. It was just a giant Nintendo commercial. It was awesome. Kind of missed that blatant, like just product placement. <laughs> I just got sucked into a Nintendo. <laughs> it was just like that. That was it. Like that was the pitch meeting. I like those kind of pictures. I love those. I love how, I, that's what I love about 80s movies. I feel like that's like, it was just a, a, an elevator pitch. Oh, what if Arnold was a commando and killed a lot of people? Done. Got it. <laughs> Here's 30 million and a few helicopters go to town. You don't get any of that now. tuning in this really is it's cool um, for us working in front of an audience and seeing people excited to watch us draw um, I know animation can be tedious so watching people do it might be a little hard too but uh, it's nice to know people want to see how blood's being made Have you got to play the game yet? 
There's only a very few people in this stream who probably ever got to. But uh, if any of you guys are in New York City next Friday, we'll be airing it. Yeah, no, it's the 6th. It's the 6th, right? Is it the 7th? Uh, 7th. The other thing is, I don't know if the tickets are sold out for that. Oh, just mind it. If any of you guys are in town, uh, come by, help, say hi to Cody, Andrew, myself, and Bob, and we'll, uh, we'll let you take a stab at it. It's about 20 minutes of gameplay, in the, maybe longer, but we're building it out now. We're going to have, hopefully, uh, 40, 50 minutes by the time we're done, ready for the next MAGFest. Oh, well, I've landed homes. I let it perform some sort of service. What I like about it, these streams, is it gives me an excuse to animate. Um, keeps me sharper, I think, even though we're drinking. No one kind of flies in the face. No, we're not. <laughs> we're, just, we're, 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 we're staying hydrated. We're staying very hydrated. I'm hydrated AF. Um, uh, what I like about it is you get to do this and it forces us to work on blood even with our busy schedules. We'll get to do it. So these weekly little podcasts or twitches or whatever you call it, we, it, it is a great excuse. And I look at it as, you know, if this is the 20th or 21st one. It's the 20th. It's probably the 20th. <laughs> I skipped a number in there, so no. But that's a two hours each. That's a whole week I've dedicated just working on blood. Um, now, granted a, a span of five months, so that's not very impressive, but still amongst our busy schedule, that's a week we didn't have before. And it's also, you can go back and see what we could probably accomplish in a week and gauge it on that. And, uh, no, we got a lot. I would... I'm always curious to sort of know, like, how many drawings, how many seconds of animation we would have in this. I mean, what do you think? It's a lot. But it also could be used a lot. No, well, yeah, you just have to, like, I can't expand a walk cycle for 20 seconds and count it, but, like, if you kind of took every draw. Oh, God, that would be such a boring shot. <laughs> in a cartoon. Yeah, I, you can do that, though. <laughs> but in the game, for some reason, it's fine. Well, in the game, it's all contextualized. Or... All right. So let's do now. Let's do two here. What cartoons inspire the animation the most? Um, this animation is definitely kind of the '90s or early 2000s Cartoon Network stuff, like. Dexter, Powerpuff Girls, uh, a little bit of Samurai Jack, um, all those kind of UPA, like byproducts of the UPA uh, era that just kind of got revisited in the 90s, I think. That's it's funny, we keep getting other things that we've, like, well, I'm Wayside, that we mm -hmm. were being compared to that, which I don't remember even. People compared it to, like, OK KO stuff, and we did work on uh, the video game for that. Um, and, you know, I could see some comparisons with the eyes and stuff. And I think every project you work on, there's a little bit of DNA that stays in the next project for it, too. So, like, I we drew so much OKKO. Okay like, yeah. Insane. But, like, in a different style than... It was a different sure. style. It was, like, a no-holding lines. But there's just no way I wasn't going to take some of that with me, subconsciously even, to the next project. And that's, I think... Every project does that. So, you know, we, when we did our pilot Flex Caliber, um, you know, a lot of people said, oh, I could, these are the guys who worked on OKKO. And I just, and they could sort somehow tell. And I'm just like, gosh, maybe we, there is some of the OKKO OK style kind of coming through in this. I think also people just say, well, yeah, what let's ever do. They just kind of, a hive mentality of whatever they've been watching lately. But I remember when we did Coin, everyone, and I Everybody I worked on it. Super Jail, so everyone was saying this reminds you of Super Jail. Well, we also got, uh, well, at the time that that came out, we got a lot of Adventure Time. Yep. yep. Too, which we never worked Well, it's like a rubber hose yeah. kind of thing. Alright, let's see. 
let's color some of these, and then we can probably use all these to kind of repeat it to 72 seconds, 72 frames. If I did 72 seconds of that quick now, now that we'd be finished, they'll all be in Cody's court. I think when we get some two Yeah, I mean, we're trying to keep, you know, I, it, even though we're paying homage to all these things, you know, we still want our thumbprint on it. And, you know, we don't want to copy anyone directly. Uh, we're pretty blatant with our style choices, though. Like, when we want it to look like something, we try to make it look like it to the best of our ability. A lot of our jobs kind of want us to, to do the like yep. client work. We have to do that a lot. No, a lot of our client work, they just sort of they throw just a reference in your face and then you have and to do Nettie. it. Yeah, well. Never in my life. Uh, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring up that job. <laughs> don't look like Ed, Ed and Eddie, but there we go. Well, it's funny because now the people coming into the industry have nostalgia for the late, late 90s, 90s stuff yeah. where, you know, when we were coming in, it was all ladies. Well, there was other good shows at that point in time, too, though, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I... I, Ed, Ed and Eddie was sort of a game changer, though, I guess. I never really liked it, though, to be honest. It was kind of too weird or something. I never liked weird for weird's sake. Though I loved, like, some Adult Swim stuff. Like, earlier Adult Swim stuff. I mean, when Space Ghost Coast to Coast came out, I remember just watching it in Cody's dorm room, and we were always cracking up. How much content are you guys willing to fit into this game. We want the game to be around six or seven hours. I imagine if we're being intellectually honest about how much animation that would be, it'd probably be upwards of an hour. Maybe a little longer. Um, though it's hard to tell because if we animate this whole scene, there'll be each character, say there's Ten characters in it, and each one is three seconds. Do I count that as three seconds of animation or thirty seconds? So that's sort of where it's hard to kind of gauge. But I'm guessing if you just watch all the animation as it was intended, it would be probably about that work. Okay. Zordak. I'm not sure what Zordak is. Is that? Wasn't that the guy from Space Coast? Oh, Zordak. Is that? Zordak? It's Zordak. I don't know. I don't know which one. He had his own show too, didn't he, for a little bit? Or was it kind of like yeah, he did. And then there's, uh, yeah, the magma guy. Uh, how much is the final size of that? Flash is very low maintenance, especially the MX version. Yeah, uh, you have to excuse me while the diesel truck plows through the. Um, no, it's, uh, you know, these flash files are pretty tiny. Very tiny. And, and, but when you open them and animate and you resave them, them, all of a sudden they're not tiny. They're, they get big. <laughs> but in terms of like what computers can hold nowadays, I mean, I think the biggest flash file size I've had in MX was like 67 megs. And, you know, it, it, it gets dangerous then. Then you have to split up the file. Anime, anime, I mean, it's just a, the other oh, day I was just me. working and nothing, it was nothingness and it was 250 megabytes. Oh, you drag in an MP4. Not even, it was just a couple of you start adding keyframes and all of a sudden yeah. you're... I don't know what they think to make it so big. I think that they doubled the pressure sensitivity and it probably essentially would double the size of things when you think about it that way because you'd get twice as much line degradation. Ooh, looks like the hair messes up there. Yeah, maybe not. No, okay, oh, you spelled it wrong. I you know, Zor Zora, is it Zordak or Zorak? I forget what it was called. The, I forget what it was too. The, the, the one, the green guy, right? The, um, is it the green guy? That's yeah, I think it was, yeah. The, that was kind Zorak, of Zorak, that's right, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna see what that repeats here. Okay, okay, so we'll get them out of this one. And we'll do kind of a third face here. Oh, 
Oh, Brack. Was Brack the one that? Brent was the funny guy, kind of the... Was that the green? Zorak was like the mean-spirited green guy who was sort of uh, like... Oh, Brack was like the, um, the tiger or something? Was that yeah, he's a feline, feline of some sort. Yeah. No, I haven't, I haven't watched it, though. I'm going to make him cry here. Chaos, dude. Uh, he, knew, he knew Brack. Okay, the voice. Oh, you knew the voice of it? Yeah, I voice. That's crazy. To voice me. acting is the biggest scam I've ever heard of. <laughs> it is. It's, they get paid so much. It's so crazy that a guy can walk into a booth and get paid as much as somebody that has to sit there and make it. Or more, also the, way more. Also, they get residuals. Yeah. Right? Which is insane to me. Because I haven't got paid. Uh, we got paid making a cartoon, and that's it. Then, then, you know, if it airs, if it does well, it doesn't mean anything to you. No. So we'll just have a crying here, and then open back up. God, what a, uh, what a scam! Well, the fact that he can make more as a voice actor than an executive is bonkers. What does that say? What? It, well, what does it say? What an executive does? I guess uh, is a really good point. And we do our own voice acting. Cause we just no, well, <laughs> you, you do it. A lot of our stuff is uh, Bob. Pre Bob doing Bob. doing his uh, best. If anyone's seen, uh, what was it called? It was Hercules, Hercules in, in New York. Hercules in New York. It was the first Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, and there was this character. It was just supposed to, it was like a guy just being Woody Allen. Right? Yeah, it was, it was, it, it was, it's, a, it's a third party Woody Allen. <laughs> A lot of our voices are that. So we're gonna have them cry, and we can just do a second of air. Bob, you should voice this little guy for his anonymity. Oh, got to Chet's here! Uh, Chet, uh, you were one of our more popular uh, Facebooks. So you're gonna have to come here and draw with me. We'll, we'll pay for you to come out here. And that's the, L uh, that's the LIR, so that's gonna be expensive. That's a long haul. That's, that's a haul. <laughs> It's get, probably just the get a to fly you out here, I think. <laughs> yeah, we might get a <laughs> charter plane. It's a little quicker. But he can he can do the voice. He did the voice of that little elf I showed you earlier. And the Corey we did, like, when he was... What? Corey? Yeah, oh, yeah, you did that. I don't remember thing. what I did for that one. Uh, you, did your you did your pretzy. Uh, I, don't, I can't even do it on the spot now. I don't even know how. Oh, and Harry! Oh, Oh, Hercules! <laughs> <laughs> it's something along those lines. That's about it. And that's that's the thing yeah, tomorrow we're voice acting. acting. And then you just pitch shift it. With auto tune now, who's who's not a singer? Yeah, Chad, I, I wanna get you out here. We could just draw and drink together. It should be like how Titmouse does the um Yeah. I should just start doing too. that. I like that. I just... <laughs> oh, the Hampton Jitney. Oh man, <laughs> classic. I'll take that. I'll get. I'll get you that one too. Yeah, that's the classiest bus you can that take. Is. With a name like Hamptons. All right, his arms are a little big there, so I'm gonna. I don't mind them getting bigger. They're just a little beefy here, so I might have to shrink that. We don't care. You're gonna see that on at 100 percent or 25 percent. Uh, just the one arm is too big. I, I probably shouldn't keep it like that. Oh, I'm glad you watched these, Jeff. How how are, how are things at where? Uh, do you mind if I tell everyone where you work? I think I told you last week when I bugged anyone. But, but how are things going? Are you freelancing again? Oh, was that show? Who's Freaky Fred? Who's Freaky Fred? Fred. I don't know. We gotta look up Freaky Fred. All our references are just old 80s things, so it's if hard to. If it's not from. 
As mostly oh, live action. Is that if it's, if it's, Howard the Dog? Is that, uh, oh, okay. I got to meet uh, Dilworth a few times. Oh, did you? I think it was funny. He came to our class. So. I always loved Harry. He was like one of my favorite cartoons. There's like a horror genre. That's yeah. what's nice about it. So then we're going to do a cry cycle. Like that. I don't need any money. This will, of course, change the acting and the other characters will have smiling. It would be kind of mean if I had him just laughing at this That's guy. Not a problem. <laughs> So crying, you just gonna do kind of a simple up and down, and then ease out on either side, so it won't be even in between. So the shoulders will come up, the arms down. You bend the knees more. And the head down. Every once in a while, someone on Facebook will share how they traumatize this kid by curse. <laughs> really? They're traumatized by it? I guess if you watch it young enough. If you it was kind of spooky. Like if my daughter at five saw yeah, something no. on there, I could see her being. No, he came into our class. He was, he was acting kind of crazy, actually. When I I've about always it. heard I've heard he was kind of annoyed up there. Um, no, he came into our class and he like, <laughs> he took a $20 bill and ripped it in half. Well, first, the first I saw him down the hall, he had his shirt off and he was kind of chanting about stuff. And I was like, oh, who is this crazy guy? And, you know, that wasn't a very odd occurrence at SBA at the time because I see people act nuts in hallways. But when I found out he was the speaker, I was like, what's going on? So he came in and he, like, and it was sort of like a drill sergeant trying to scare us out of the animation <laughs> in general, I feel like. And he, you know, he started screaming. He's like, if you don't, if you like money, and then he'd take out the $20 bill and he ripped it in here. He's like, then you're in the wrong field. This is for people of passion and great honor and stuff like that. And he just went on like that. And then um, they like, all right, I want to see everyone's portfolio. And then, he just completely changed tune. What class was this? It was pitching or whatever, Tim Arnold. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I don't think he had him. But he just like, it was a little bipolarish. He just like, all right, I want to see. And he's like, oh, this is a nice fellow, dude. <laughs> like, like, but he went, he kind of went nuts on us. It was a lot like that salty. It's yeah, it's all this good coffee. Okay, so we'll start low and go high. Who was that? Yeah, oh, the guy who did the Sheep in the Big City? I had. He brought yeah. that, that guy in. Like no, it's just very... There just, just was so much more going on in the city at that time. Still. But New York had a bigger kind of... It had a more expansive sort of animation boom where there's people at MTV and then there's yeah, people at right. Nickelodeon. And, and it's all Viacom-based, I guess, but... Now the city sort of lost its edge a little bit. Well, and Curious Pictures was doing Curious, a lot. Curious, yeah. Way, mm -hmm. like, way back when they were Well, that's when, you know, that's when companies hired yeah. 50 or 60 people in right a out, job, so, yeah. you know. Now you'll, you know, the industry's changed in that regard. I mean, there's no real, I mean, with the exception of Tim Mouse, there's no one hiring 60 people in one. So we'll color this. Favorite games? My favorite game oh, it has to one. still be of all time is is Last of Us. Um, I still I I still think about that sometimes. 
like I like I still think about gosh that was such a sort of an emotional kind of thing to go through I still love thinking I, I still would I wouldn't be against playing it again later at launch too uh, let's see that's my favorite kind of game currently um, I say the games that influenced me and like video games though were from the Super Nintendo genre I really like Final Fantasy 3 or 6 depending on which one you're talking about it, it was the one it was technically 6 but it was called 3 in the states um, I liked all those kind of role playing games like Secret of Mana uh, Chrono Trigger I loved uh, those are the ones that kind of really I invested a lot of time in playing and then, and then there was like that. all my friends and I used to goof around and play Mortal Kombat and stuff like that though I'm not in love with those violent fighter games as much but I'd say Super Nintendo Link to the Past Link to the Past yeah. I was just playing that one for the first time that one's yeah we, we played the Minish Cap the Minish Cap was amazing was incredible. Was incredible. Yeah, it was really good it made me wanna like I, I love that genre though I mean where the whole plot is anyway I mean, I guess that, that Instagram post was very minish. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of link in there. A little bit of long. Long. It's brother. It's twin brother. Um. Right, let me pop up out here. Um. I've been playing with your little bit. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, no, you should totally play that game. It's, it's a game changer for, for us, too. Uh, yeah, but those are my favorite ones. I wish I got more time to play games. Uh, you know, I have that mini Super Nintendo, and uh, my kids are still pretty young, so, you know, they want me to play Mario Kart with them and stuff like that. Uh, but I am excited to sort of introduce my older one to the more story-driven games. I've been playing a shit ton of Lego games now. So. You. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, you and your daughters. <laughs> Let's see what we'll do. So I'm going to favor... Which those, the, those uh, Lego games are... I am not, not very not good at puzzle. puzzle. Like, telling you that they're a good lesson into what not to do sometimes I've been finding. I mean, those games for kids, you know, you can't... No, but, like, you, you she, she would be able, like, I can't figure out what the hell you're supposed to do. <laughs> it's Is just, it, like, just, like, just not intuitive? No, not at all. Yeah. Not like a, like, I know, like, a good Nintendo game would have been. Like, when the puzzle was, like, when, you know, when you figure out a puzzle and you're finally, like, oh, yeah, that's... And you, it makes you feel smart. Well, Some like of those it, Lego ones are just, like, kind of you're right. just, like, when you finally figure it out, it's not, like, well, oh, I finally figured it out. It's, like, why, how the hell was I supposed to know that? <laughs> Uh, Minish Cap did a great job. No, Minish Cap. And it was, what was that originally on? It was on Game Boy like Advance. Advance. Yeah. We played it on an emulator, so. But the graphics held up beautifully. Uh, it was, uh, all of those Zelda games are so plotted out perfectly. It's, you know, it makes, it makes sense to revisit certain areas and all that kind of stuff. And you really get an appreciation for kind of level design or like map design when you play those games because you could make things look great and you could do all that stuff but if it's not kind of intuitive or fun to play you're kind of just watching something and that's not the same as like, like that beep that beep 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 so we do one more in between there then we have to that Hampton's traffic. They gotta uh, go through wherever I had to go. Chad, to the you're Hamptons. gonna be on the jitney doing those beeps. Or... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta cross through this this town first. But can you grab me a tall yeah. a tall water? It's large. I think Bud Light's as close as you can get to non-alcoholic. Oh yeah, it's hot in here too. So this is this is refreshing. So I favored this side. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think I said this already, but when you do these kind of manic things, I always ease out so it pops a little bit. 
and it just feels a little, you know, when someone's gone crazy, it's not like they ease into a lot of their movements. So it, it makes sense to pop a little bit on these ones. And what I'll do for each one of these sprites is I'll duplicate them, and then there'll be a sprite of, like, if Becky decides to talk to them, and if this is a talkable character. So we'll have to kind of gauge into that one as well, like what we can do to about that. Let's see who's calling. Oh gosh. I got in a fight with the, the marble people because they, they chipped one of my tiles. So I went, I kind of screamed at them the other day, now they're calling. I'm not going to answer that. They chipped the tile, and now they're trying to make me pay for it. Marble, I got in a fight with them the other day. Did you really? <laughs> well, they gave me a proposal. They're trying to charge me $409 to replace a tile they cracked. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? <laughs> so, I didn't hear. Oh, no, I left them the meanest email I've ever wrote someone professionally. It's like, we're, I said something like, we're going to look for cheaper alternatives because of something you guys did. Or the, I was so pissed though. Well, I was sitting there looking at the crack tile, like right before it's right before I leave for the house, and I just I got in my car and just wrote, just angrily typed out an angry email to them. Oh my god! I said we're gonna find a cheaper alternative to fix your work or something really like a, a real a hole. No, but it's not, but it's, uh, it's not. No, I, I don't it's think I did anything, so. but I was mad. Let's see, I kind of want to pop into the. So we're going to pop into this pose. Maybe like a final cry here. Pop to it. <laughs> Can't believe they called back. All right, so we're going to have like a final cry here, and then we can uh, repeat the cycle. Gotcha. How many expression cycles have you made? How many expression cycles have you made for each character so far? Well, Becky, I got... I'll show you the Becky spreadsheet. She has the most. So this is all her spreadsheets, though Bob has a role in there, we did too. So these are all every angle of doing, oh there's the role anyway. These are all her attacks. And then we have a miscellaneous one where she uh, opens up her phone. Is that even in there? I don't know where we put it. <laughs> and then we did all the talks here. And then we have a miscellaneous one where she answers on the phone. She picks up things. We have a part where um, she's crawling up a ladder now. You know, then there's scene-specific stuff. But that one's for the just kind of rudimentary gameplay. You make it a video? <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> It's all a, a giant hoax. That'd be a funny way to get fans. Actually, this is not a game. So we'll have this. Hey, we, we got the. We gotta find that um. That we got our thing in the magazine there, right? We were in the edge. Magazine. Yeah, we mentioned that. That uh, Cody that actually week? showed them. That last week. 
I yeah, we have the alternative too. We could show. Let's see why not. Uh, yeah, we were featured in Edge Magazine, uh, this European gaming magazine. It seems to be very in indie focused. Um, but we did like a two page spread of just artwork for that too. It came out cool. We, it was it, that was a lot of fun. Again, it was like a Where's Waldo yeah. kind of feel. Like we just filled it out with a bunch of characters. So we give it a kind of feel very legit. Like it was like people. No, it felt like them. oh okay now that that's serious. We're kind of getting noticed. Uh, the magazine. What was it called? Edge. Edge, Edge magazine. magazine. Um, I think. Can you get it online? I think it's all sold out. Actually, I was. What's I right? think it was the. Um, that I was reading about the print version sold out. Oh, the print version. Because it was a. Oh was a yeah, big well there was a really big article in it about the new. Um, system where you crank it up. I had a crank. And yeah, had to crank. It seemed yeah. really kind of cool. Uh, so I think we. I mean that was just serendipity that we were in that. So I'll just have this kind of a cycle too. Like he's crying. Then we can in between that. We could react. I'm gonna add some tears to him too. He has to be crying. And we have to move his arms and do the rest of that. <laughs> I can't believe they called that. No, it's a really cool, um, I think Cody showed it last time, I don't know. He probably showed it I don't know where Cody's MIA, but I, he's, he's at the doctor's, so. <clears throat> no, it was a, it was a, a pretty big honor for us. Uh, you know, we have no idea our, our reach like who knows about what and who doesn't we had a you know our trailer on twitter did really well got you know 102,000 views which is something we've never experienced so um it was nice to see you know the word spread a little bit and what i'll do here is make this a symbol And I'll do a stagger on this so we can cry a little bit. What color can I make it now? So what I'll do for a stagger is just, I think I showed you guys this a few times, but it doesn't hurt to revisit it. Uh, Chet knows what we used to call this. Do you remember what we used to call this, Chet? I want to see if he remembers our old super jail lingo. That was a bit of a haze. We were we were partying a lot, weren't we? <laughs> we were just, let's say let's go to Pedro's. I want to see if Chet... Chet, if Chet's even listening. No, that's another problem. The Jared Shake, that's right. The old, the old Jared Shake. Uh, the character in Super Jail, Jared, which was the warden's, like, kind of right-hand man, kind of organized the whole jail. He was always a nervous wreck. So anytime he had a pose, we'd have to make it a symbol and do a, a, a three-frame, a five-frame stagger. So we kind of just named it the Jared, the Jared stagger or the Jared shake. And, you know, even the interns were in on it, so they all knew. And this is sort of how we did it. This is a, as fast as we had to work in Super Jail. We were 
each one of us animators had to do 11 seconds a day, it really came down to. And uh, it wasn't easy on the old fingers here. And anyone familiar with Super Jail knew how it wasn't just a one character talking in one shot. It was always just the magnitude of characters and explosions and violence. I look back at that and I'll, I, I don't know how we did it and partied as hard as we did. We could do a lot more when we were younger. Oh, when you were, yeah, yeah. We had to grow up fast after that. No kids. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a lot easier. No kids. <laughs> Andrew Tavis. That's our programmer, everyone. Andrew. That just chimed in. Andrew, you're the one that makes it so easy with these kids. I'll tell you what. You, uh, you're the only one that seems to get this figured yeah, out. Yeah, you have it figured out. Your I kids, just your kids a little younger than us. Your, your daughter is super mature for... Uh, is she, you know, she seems like a very uh, easygoing kid. You only had one. <laughs> I think Bob that's and I doubled down, and Cody, Cody tripled down. Cody made a real bad choice. <laughs> he had twins. Tactical error. <laughs> it's, just, it's easy, just ignore it. Oh, Cody was amazing. Thank you. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed that. That was sort of our flagship kind of uh, IP for a little bit. Uh, Disney ended up... Until they bought it. Really. Until Disney bought it. <laughs> <laughs> then, well, you guys don't see a lot of coin, do you? <laughs> so, um, no, but I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was our first short we made here. Just ignore him. I've been trying. What about you guys? Any uh, Anyone else here have kids in the art field? Curious how you balance that if you do. Give me some pointers. How do you make money and have kids and work in the arts? Those three things don't even sound like they belong in the same paragraph. There was always a couple of those people at like, people museum and whatnot. I think if you have a staff job, it's a little yeah. easier, but I feel like those are kind of a bygone era. No, they're, I mean, unless it just sounds like an L.A. thing, though. And then, then they're not even animating yeah, they Because yeah. the one thing the arts are not is a 9 to 5, 40 hour a week, turn off your brain on the weekend kind of job. I, but... You know, I've always been fascinated, especially since opening the studio, with, like, what I consider super successful kind of people, and I, I always tried to mirror what they were doing. So when anyone has good advice like that in the arts and has the family life and mortgage and all the problems that come with adulthood, mom and I mean, no, we're close to our parents, all of us, too, so we're, you know, we're, we're all in the same town, so we do have sort of a go-to babysitter when we need. Uh, my wife stays at home. Most, uh, she's, you know, she's a homemaker, stays, stays at home with the kids. Bob's wife does that three or, what is she? Does she, she work, work two, two or three days a week? Two or three days a week. So we do rely a lot on family, stuff like that. And my wife's parents are really close to us too, so we have this sort of safety net and stuff. But I, it's it's hard. I never want to take advantage of them, you know, because they, you know, they raised us. I don't, they don't need to be raising our kids. Yeah. yeah. No, I find it's a little easier. One, my my wife's a natural at it. She's really, you can tell she always wanted to have kids, and you know, she used to run a daycare and all this stuff. So she, she's at home in in crazy town with my kids right now. So it, it helps with, with that, too. Uh, also, they get older, and then they're, you know, you can... Then you just ignore them. Then, 
Then there's other problems, I feel like, when they're older. Like high school kind of problems. That. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, one thing I'm grateful for, not grateful for a lot, but growing up in high school without social media, I, I think it's such a blessing <laughs> that we, you know, because Jared and I were always doing dumb, you know, dumb stuff. Like, we would have just, if we had a phone that had a camera on it, we would have just been filming ourselves breaking mailboxes, yeah. you know. Instead of just breaking mailboxes. Instead of just busting the mailboxes, <laughs> we'd, we'd be editing that stuff right now. And just, oh God, right? I feel like my career would be over. That's my friend. Oh, okay, that's too, do you see? That's the smart move. I was never a smart guy. That's a real one. And there's something about the New York animation scene. They were just partiers, too. We just, at least our clique was. No, we, I mean, ours was. But yours thing, was, too. And you were, like, doing, like, kid like shows. And no. Uh, oh, yeah, no. It was, it was bad. And, and good. So what I'm going to do now, so we got this just sort of in-between cycle. Now the Jared Stagger. We're just going to take frame three here, on, if you watch the timeline. Shift it over to two, two to three, five to four, and four to five. They kind of got this manic stagger. Control Alt C the middle. Control Alt B, paste them, then reverse the frames. So you got this kind of uh, ease and ease out stagger. And then you just kind of randomly shoot it on twos and ones and stuff, so it just feels a little more. Well, that feels kind of like a bellowy scream. And since that's not playing long enough, we'll shoot it over to 80 and get to it. Maybe 96. We might shoot this over though. Let's do three and a half seconds on this guy. And 72 was just a face plate, you know, we could make these as long as we need. Oh my gosh, I missed my mic. I missed a lot of my mic there, so that's close. Yeah. So you might talk okay, where we might be. And my apologies. This will not be a meeting for 40 days. Yeah, oh God, man, yeah. It really is a blessing. Like, no, I know. I, I can imagine just, like, I, I just, and people are so crappy on the internet. They're just so mean to people. It just no, something you would never say to someone. Well, if they had to put their name to it, they wouldn't say it. That's the thing. No, really, would be solid by having to put your name to it and being accountable for what you And then you could, I mean, imagine, like, imagine what you would write on Facebook when you were 14. You were just, you know. Lincoln Park for life. <laughs> so you know what we would grow up. And then you would, then you would, you know, then people would look up that 20 years later and you're like, yeah, you're running for office? You know, so the, it's just not, not right. Alright, thanks for joining us, Cracky Comics. That was, uh, little brain there, okay. Okay, well, thanks so for joining us. Ours. ours is bad too. So I'm gonna animate the arms now, and you see how I duplicated the arms on either side. Oh, let me first show you guys something. I was talking about Nickelback for life. Yeah. Nickelback for life. What did we use? Oh no. What did we Sometime use? In, what did we do in Flex? It wasn't Nickelback. It was Coldplay. Coldplay. That's what we originally. People actually like Coldplay. Yeah. Which is uh. The original joke. Well then uh. Hey, listen, they're, they're selling you. I'm not buying it. <laughs> um, no, I just couldn't imagine. I, I fear for my kids a little bit in that regard, where just I kind of have to be vigilant about them staying off the Internet, which should just be used as this tool to gain knowledge and sort of did the opposite, but live and learn. It's it's a little scary. 
kind of people's reputations are just you know and once that cement is dry that's sort of what you are you are your last post almost all right so what I did was just trace back these two so I'm going to copy these frames and I add another layer and then I'm just going to follow the same chart as the mount. Which I'm going to line up quite nicely, actually. So I'm just lining up the frames thusly. Put them down. Okay, so now if you look at this at 25%, it'll look like we drew every frame on the same you know, like the head and torso are all on the same chart, so it looks like we redrew them each time. And it's just, you know, you're going to be paying attention. Well, one, this is just one insulary character, but you're going to be paying attention to a bunch of other stuff, so it's just really the illusion of drawing the whole thing over. So now what I'll do is kind of do this arm, and these arms will be acting, so it's going to be like up and down, up and down, so we could do a few cycles of that. And I'll look at that. Let's bend it a little bit less. Don't look at that either. Yeah, something like that. A little bit less. So he's just sort of manically moving his hands here. Follow this on the same chart too, so it'll all be moving at once. A little stretch. You can pop over to there. Pop settle. So this will hyperextend. Kind of over here. See how that looks. Then he's kind of doing these crazy arms here. Then we could kind of go like he's going up and down like that a little bit. He's really screaming. And we could even do a little bit of OKKO OK thing where he's kind of doing like, like really shaking his arms like for an in between. A little too thick for the rough. Great for like, <laughs> I miss all these. They would like our uh, playlist that we've got going on there. We had a contest for a while. Who we could just come with up ourselves. With our, just ourselves, <laughs> yeah. I don't know who won that contest. I think we had yeah, lost, wins, actually. Everybody loses that contest, that's great. Uh, but it was just the worst song you ever heard of contest, and we just had a bunch of yeah, there's all a lot 90 of stuff. Music. There is a bunch of those. Those those people all reminded me of it, though. But uh, our our number one worst song was um, Hey Leonardo. <laughs> that was sure. Uh, I had Scatman. Oh, uh, Scatman. <laughs> it it had a it had a criteria though. It had to sort of be catchy. Yeah, like you were like you were mad that you liked it a little bit. <laughs> Go like that maybe. God, those were some bad songs. Oh man, there's some real. What was the 
What was Cody's one? God, that was How bizarre. How bizarre, yes. How bizarre. How bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would count too. Oh, is that blue? Is that that was on there? That was our yeah. We had that blue. blue was on there as one of our. That was one of that our was top in the ones. top 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 two. I think it could be the top one easily. <laughs> we like that. Ben Kingsley trio. <laughs> It was a lot of 90s stuff. What was that? Four Nom Blondes? Four Nom Blondes, yeah. Just... No, it had to be catchy, though. That was the that was the trick. You didn't want to like it, sort of. And you're sort of a li There's a little bit of shame attached to it. A little bit of Chumbawamba attached to little, it. A little Chumbawamba. <laughs> a lot more Chumba than Wamba. I did. I'll just retrace that. There you go. That guy likes Shumble Wumble too, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna bend this arm actually. Or Mambo 5, I'm not <laughs> sure. Or, or Mambo 5. <laughs> I don't think you, I don't think we're in danger of that. So I'll do that. Okay. So this guy is going crazy now. And what I could do is take this arm and then swap it over for the next arm is what, what I'll do when I'm finished here. Yeah, Superstore is playing outside, huh? Yeah, speaking of. Late 90s, fun. <laughs> No, but we had this contest going for a while. It was fun. Sure. Until we had to listen to it. <laughs> you can't listen to that playlist for more than 20, 20 minutes. Once you listen to it, it wasn't as fun at all. summer around here. Yeah. So this one will fly that way. Kind of. We'll favor the left side here. That's just a big settle. How many hours do you a day you work? Uh, we come in around nine, we leave around six, and then uh, you know there's about three nights a week usually. I work at night from kind of when the kids go down. Um, Your kids go to sleep. Kids go to <laughs> sleep. When when and if my kids go down, it'll be eight thirty to midnight sometimes. Depends on the job though. If you know all of a sudden done, it would be. Uh, probably a 45, 50 hour week would be my ideal week, but it's probably closer to 60, 7, 65 hours. Uh, but the studio uh, will stay open 9 to 6, and if we have to finish something, you know, as late as we need. We find most clients kind of leave by 6 anyway, so. Or or send you what they want at six yeah and then walk away and sometimes you're in la time and that's a little dicey
But that's typical animation hours, I think. I mean, most studios do the same thing. Sometimes, ten, usually they open around 10. start up. So I copy the frames, I'm going to just start with them up here so we can end with it there. Let me just see what this looks like. Keep these like this. So you can see I'm just kind of chopped up some frames there, but it's all good. Now we're just going to have to up to that. And between those ones, we'll pop to those things. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> animate these ones. So we're going to favor each side again. Um, Especially when they're manic like this, you want to favor the top side when it's top heavy and bottom side when it's bottom heavy there. So, so then we'll kind of twist the arm back this way. And then you can color those and copy and paste away. to the cry. So the arm is coming up here. We're going to bend the arm the other way to show some tension. And you can see the volume of the hands, how much they change. And that's why we don't really do the model sheets because it just it would I feel like it would just serve to kind of hurt us in the end because we just want to we just want each drunk to look fun sort of and by changing the proportions this much and being this loose with everything you kind of get a sense that these were as fun to draw as we can make them Now I can copy these frames and put them on the other side and see if that works with the other hand since that's what I did. Now what I'll do is 
select all. Modify transform, look horizontal. See if it even works. Sometimes, you know, when you reverse it like this, it doesn't work exactly. But that does work in this case. for each of those. So it pops, right? Because when it, when it switched to the other arm, it was like kind of in mid-motion, so this will be almost a settle at the end before we go right into the crying animation, which we'll just do all on one layer. It's it just easier to do that rather than manage your layers. And I try to always minimize, when I'm doing traditional stuff, I try to minimize the layers as much as I can. Now there's exceptions, of course, like especially with the like if we're lip syncing it to actual audio, I'll um, be sure to separate them out so I can kind of just focus on that instead of the whole overall um, overall acting. But for this, I try to keep it as simple as I can. Plus, it also helps my After Effects file. Oh yeah, we to do separate. Otherwise, we got big old layer heavy. All right, so I'm gonna do a giant ease out for this. <laughs> so the arms were coming down. We're gonna kind of favor. Yeah, I'm doing this again. The arms can be big here going to be closing his eyes. Hair's coming down like that. This arm's coming over here. The body's pretty self-explanatory. And that's, yeah, remember when I um, kind of swapped out the cry thing to be the, at, at the lower point now of his head? So that means when a pop settles, it's going to happen now, rather than it almost ease out. But again, with this manic kind of thing, you always want the pops, I feel like. All right, let's clean that up. These uh, sprite animations come in right at about the two-hour mark, Bob. So it's a good, little it's a good little fun thing. And what is this? So yeah, we keep do about five, three and a half seconds of you know a little bit of cycle animation here, but um, in two hours. So on any given day, we could probably get. 15 to 20 seconds done of these kind of animations. Yeah, those of you who watched um, uh, me when I was on the trailer um, animation, I wasn't getting anything done a day in two hours. So it's all kind of speculative of what you can get finished. But these tiny town things are always pretty quick turnaround. And they have to be. We have to get this game finished. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to rough that one out. I was gonna go for it, but the next one I can just I think this go right to the cleanup. And Chet, you used to be the master of that. I think you still are probably, but I remember watching Chet work and he'd be really good at just going right to clean up. Especially with the settles, you would just be lightning quick. Chef the master. We had to get him here. Hampton Jitney be damned. Without 
Yeah, they they do when they once they get past exit seventy one. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Chet watching you. Chet, Chet and I sat next to each other at Augenwood Studios. But I remember um, we were working on a show called Ugly Americans. And we did the storyboards and we were the revision team, which meant we had to kind of go into other people's files and fix animation that, you know, there's a few reasons why it changed. Sometimes it wasn't up to snuff. Other times it was story changes made after storyboards which is a whole other twitch that we can get into about what makes Chris furious. Um, it's not much. It's not but, much. Uh, it's it it right. um, but I used to watch him and he just, he would just manage his way to flash all of Well, certainly when I meet a client, they always say, I know animation takes a long time, but I always shop my time how long it's going to take. Oh, well, yeah. And pricing, too. So no, the pricing, pricing always shocks them. We had a guy come in here. <laughs> that was the shortest meeting we've ever had. the shortest meeting you could ever get for. Uh, well, there's a few, right? <laughs> well, I agree. No, they're always shocked. But like, what do you mean it takes... No, it's just, a, it's just 30 seconds. I mean, the sentence was 20 seconds. Why didn't you get it done? But uh, we had a guy come in here, and he was a live-action guy, or so we claimed. And uh, we kind of gave, you know, and we're, uh, I don't think we're an expensive company. I think, in fact, we underbid ourselves a whole lot just to stay and competitive. Very quick. We and we're, we're, we're quick, yeah. We, we could get stuff done fairly efficiently, I think. So I gave him our price range. He's like, all right, that'll be it. <laughs> just walked out, never heard from him again. But like, it was a couple of weeks in the movie time. Like, <laughs> he was that was the. He like showed up, and uh, I don't. He was, I don't know what he was doing. He was, kept saying, "It's like I want to make viral videos." <laughs> yeah, who does it? Like, like there's a formula to that. That was really bullet dodged. No, Chad, I, I remember watching you at Ugly Americans. Even Super Jail, I remember. You did that scene with um, Alice in the bathtub. Do you remember that scene, Chad? I think it was one of the first episodes where she was talking in the bathtub to the warden. And everyone stood around your computer and they were just blown away how good it came out. And he did, so GD quick, I couldn't believe it. Alright, so that's working, I think, pretty well. So now the last thing we have to do is get to that. Two frames of that. And then Two frames. Two frames. Two, four more drawings. Let's see how quick we can do this. All right, we're at the two hour mark. Let's see. Go. <laughs> Go, let's do it. I'm gonna rough it out though. Put my money where my mouth is. Um, do you remember that scene, Chet? The one I'm talking about? That she was in the bathtub talking on the phone, I think. We had layout artists and stuff too, with that. But uh, I mean, the the lion's share of the drawing was was done by the animators, I think. The, I mean, the layout, you know, all the camera moves and stuff were plotted out. I had the 
Wes Adamander's the look up who's sitting next to him for years. Oh, well. That's kind of, that's very kind of you to say. <laughs> Not true. Maybe the worst influence. Chris Wallinger was on that too. Chris Wallinger is sort of me and Chad. He's everyone's boss now. Chet, myself, Bob, running shop over there. So we're going to do what he's in it. Can't cross the boss. But, uh, yeah, that's a, to harken back to what we were talking about, about, like, the people you know and uh, schooling and all that stuff earlier on when we were mentioning that. It's like if I didn't go to SVA or these studios or was self-taught, I would have never met people like Chad or Chris Wallinger or any of the Super Jail crew. So it's that weird thing where it, you have to outweigh... <laughs> the relationships you gain in college and in early in the industry to make a name for yourself too. So it's sort of like paying your dues a little bit. Like if this was a union. I don't even know how, if I can name on one hand how many people are still working from my class in the industry. Oh, my class didn't, yeah, there wasn't a lot of people in my class per se that, that made it all the way to a professional career. But I, I think I only graduated with yeah, no, now the class. Oh, no, I just went to a screening at SVA. It was 100 kids. I don't think we had 100 kids in totem. At, uh, you yeah, know, through all well, four years yeah. of animation in our class. Going to, what is that, AI Houston or Al Houston? Not a good choice. Why, why not? Do you, uh, just didn't have the... Well, Arts Institute, probably. Oh, Art Institute, probably. There's, I know there's like, what's the did, one Did you go there for animation? No, it, it probably does behoove you to go to one of the bigger ones or, or bust. Art Institute, yeah. Why do you, why do you recommend it? Do you feel like you were just chipped with in terms of learning stuff, or? I also think you had to treat it like a trade because it is, you know, there's principles no, to places. it. So a lot of places just say, hey, make a film, and pat you on the back. And well, that, yeah, I mean, we're getting some of these smaller schools sending kids out there with absolutely zero. I also learned like the most from my internships too, you know, like No internships helped. Um, my first job helped the most though, I'd say. My first full time job. I worked at another place. <laughs> so great. Heavy on industrial design. I imagine there is a lot of money or career opportunity industrial design though, no? Like you could find work doing like uh, infrastructure stuff and I feel like that's a sort of, I mean it's not as say fun or quirky as animation but I, I, I would imagine there's a lot of opportunity in that, no? I could just be talking out my ass because I don't, yeah. I don't know but it, it feels like it could have a, be right with opportunity. Another beautiful part about MX is that I've been constantly saving this and you would never notice, whereas if I was in its uh, predecessor, or uh, whatever the opposite of predecessor is, the newer version of Anatomy. be taking my time. I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna shoot this 
it's on twos. And this one I'm going to ease in. Since the arms are pretty close. And we can actually have the mouth closed here, like he's still talking. I think that'll look better actually than just easing out to the, the mouth uh, staying open. Essentially he is still talking, so. Adobe just made it a bit faster with the newest updates currently working with it. Oh yeah, we haven't updated it. I haven't updated in a long time. <laughs> we well, we're working in it. Uh, faster in what way? Like the way it saves, or just it's a little expedited in general? Uh, I got six minutes. Going. Okay, six minutes for three drawings. Is that good? Feels slow. Still see the loading bar. Yeah. Oh, that, that's it's funny. You still see the loading bar when it's in. It's crazy that MX didn't have that. Like, it didn't need to. I don't even remember. I can't remember. I don't no, think I don't CS3 think CS3 had it either. either. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, well, you see someone saying, uh, lower there, saying it's slower. I guess it depends on the operating system, too. You see, we're still working on what. Yeah, I, it sounds like we don't know what we're doing. We're still oh, yeah, it's like, just but, um, a tool. Probably men that aren't going to. Well, the just thing is, we're working it, too. Yeah. So. I, guess we could sit here and worry all day about which version of what we should be using, or we could just. Well, sometimes we have to. Down down that I worry what's ever going to come out next is going to be really geared towards the non animators. Because they've slowly been trying to do away with animations, I feel like, or like the animators in general, guess, like they're yeah. trying to, I don't know, with like that deep fake stuff, I feel like cartoons are next. <laughs> All right, last drawing, and then some tears. And this is a little extended version. I'm drawing blood. Yeah. Isn't it called that? Yeah, no. It, it should have quotation marks around it. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. Because they keep adding tools for, like, very little has been done about, uh, like, brush consistency to me, or, like, what... Um, I find even when you try to loop the animation, like, there'll be... Like, if you put it on loop playback, there'll be a, a little pause, which, whatever, that's not a big deal. I mean, back in the day, they didn't have that. I get it. But what irks me <laughs> is that they did have it, and then someone went into the code and changed a bunch of it. And it's there's a few problems I have with it. One, when you have to rent something, I don't mind renting stuff, but if we rent our studio, I don't care about that. It's when they feel obligated to keep changing it to justify you keep paying for it. So in the middle of a project, we'll have an update, and then something's drastically changed, and they're like, well, what was this for? So I'll give them a call. And then they'll say, oh yeah, we're fixing that. I was like, well, it wasn't broken on Tuesday, and here we are Wednesday, and I'm stuck. And they're like, yeah, and then just sort of hang up. <laughs> it's like, I don't like that model. I don't think it's, uh, I don't even think it's a, uh, it doesn't make sense as a business model even. You want consistency. Oh, Lord, it's just having that loop problem. Yeah, no, you'll, you'll always have it. It's because they are, they're compiling things so much and messing things up with the undo so much and all these little things that are trying to, the reason why the files are so big too because it remembers every little thing you did for it undo and 
and trying to remember, like, you know, like, selecting a color shouldn't be an undo. Well, because selecting it doesn't a color shouldn't crash, crash the program either, but that, no, that no, happens to me at least no. once a day. <laughs> like, that's not an, an undo is like a mark you make, not like, like, it used to, they fixed it, but again, it wasn't broke, was when you used to watch, say I watched this three times down, like, I kept and enter. They count that as a move, <laughs> which is crazy because I don't, you don't get that time back. It's not like oh, I'll undo it and get it, get back my thirty seconds, and then they'll just keep altering it, and they'll do that in perpetuity. And it doesn't behoove them to make a perfect product all of a sudden because they need the rentage money. So it's a little frustrating. All right. And so, oh, had to color this really. So, no, that's my problem with it. And I don't like that we have no control over. Like, if we were, we chose to update, we'd be in trouble all of a sudden. Oh, you can't downgrade more than two patches now. But no, I, no, you see, that's that that's, that's, new that's thing. Yeah, troubling that's to me. That's really troubling. And I know why they do that. That's not an insidious thing that they're doing. It's just they don't want to keep, you know, keep everyone using it. But it also it's also a little telling to me that they're doing stuff like that, and sort of all of a sudden we can't we can't use a version that we liked, so we can keep renting from them. It's it's strange to me. If we hired firefighters. So, you know, we, we pay taxes to have firefighters so they put out fires. Now all of a sudden we stop fires. Would you want them in the woods smoking a bunch of cigarettes so they have something to do? Okay, let's do some tea here. Can I get the chart here? Tier color. I usually use this from the um, swatches we have. I'm gonna rough out some tiers. All right. I'll use no holding lines on kind of these effects. We've been doing that with the smoke too. Um, but in some cases we use it, it's, we don't have an exact science, honestly. Uh, now with any arc, you're going to kind of float in the, on the top the longest. So it'll be quick, quick into the arc and quick out of the arc, or slow out of the arc. Keyframes at this point, so I can kind of follow the arc still. And effects are usually our best served um, straight ahead, I find. Especially with smoke or fire. It, it's hard to do a cycle with them. Now, when it's a long scene, you're going to have to. But something like this, you're going to want to kind of just do straight ahead, I find. And you'll get a knack for it the more you practice it with it. So let's see if we got that right. Okay, so that's fun. So I'm going to copy that. Right I'll flip it on this side so both ears on this side. Now I'm going to keep the same chart though, so the animation is actually going to be a little bit different inherently. So, 
And then we can do that again. Lower this one. And since they have no holding lines, we can even shrink it. Like Lou timing. Yeah, no, I, I've studied many, many a night I've checked out Lou's timing. That floatiness. That's how I learned my, my animation. So we kind of got this thing going. No, Lou, I, I would I love think we to all learn from Lou. I, I feel like Lou <laughs> Salas is, one, again, one of those unsung heroes of animation that you, you don't hear a lot about, but he, he influenced so many artists, I feel like. I got I was lucky enough to sit next to him at Augen Blitz when he was on Thunder Chosen. Got these tears happening. Need to add a little spit to when he's going crazy here. I'll do spit and sweat as the same thing. Again, I can follow the same sort of arc. This time I'm doing two. How do you organize your symbols and layers in a complex scene where elements are intertwined with parts of a character A and parts of character B? Uh, when they're hugging and stuff, you're going to want to put them in the same symbol, I find. Um, otherwise, I would separate the characters. Like, I would character A would be one symbol, character B would be the other. If they're not touching each other, you don't need to really worry about it. But if they were, say, they're kind of talking to each other and hugging, you're going to want to put them in the same exact symbol. So. Because I know one arm's going to go in front and one arm's going to go behind and all that stuff. So you're just going to have to coordinate that. I know it's a, kind of a pain in the butt to do that, but it's the only, you'll drive yourself mad, especially if you're working in Animate and you don't have the option of editing your symbols. So you're going to want to definitely put them all in to the same exact symbol just so you can nail the timing down, right? Uh, if it's a talking head show, I would separate the head for sure. I would um, separate the torso, in that case, too, and then the legs of the arms. And I, I, it depends on the show, but I always try to follow the same chart, uh, especially if they're coordinated, too. But definitely bring them into the same symbol. We had a lot of that in Ugly Americans where people were, like, exchanging stuff. And if the scene's not panning, you could get away with it pretty easily in the same symbol. And that's not to say the heads are in the same same symbol. You know, you get you just bring the whole character into one. So if you're left changing one, you can still separate the head in that regard. It's gonna be a lot of layers though. Alright, so let's see what we got here. So how long is eighty four. So we got one character done in a hallway, which is going to have a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, symbols within symbols. Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, and I know so many symbols within symbols. Oh, yeah, you just have to do it that way. Um, it, just, it just, that especially my front timeline, like C1, I just want two or three layers usually, and it'll background, foreground, you know, mid-ground, another, like, multi-plane stuff and then characters. Now, you know, when a table, when a character is in front of a table or something, you're going to want to separate everything. But... Okay, so that's a little longer version of Drawing Blood, but we got one character down. So, uh, two hours of character. We can get this scene done before MAGFest for sure. And what I'll do now too many, not too many games, <laughs> too many animations, the problem with that. Um, so I got this guy talking, right, and he's crying and talking, so I'm going to want to coordinate 
my animation in this one. So when he's crying, maybe he could be like, this guy will be going, oh, they're there, or whatever. He'll be reacting with him in that. So I'll kind of keep in mind that these two sprites are coordinated. So when he's at frame 41 or so, I'll, I'll have him start talking and maybe, you know, trying to consult him a little bit and then right back to him kind of reacting to what this guy's doing. So when he's like crying like that, I'll have him like back up like, whoa, or something like that. And, you know, kind of gauge it in that regard. So this one will be 84 frames too. So that is Drawing Blood episode 20. You're saying 20. 20. I'm saying 20. It's really 20, but it's 20 or 21. Because you decided to just. Uh, I don't know. What do you say by episode 25? Chet, what do you think? Can you make it here? 20. All expenses paid to a Bubba Diner at the end of Long Island. We will even get you food at the diner. <laughs> we'll keep trying food at the <laughs> diner. Uh, beers on us. And. Sure thing. All right, 25. Mark your calendars, everyone. That's a month away. Well, uh, we're in Chris's oh, terms, it might be next it week. It might be three know. weeks. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what next number is going to be. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's promote some stuff here. Next week, we have Animation Anarchy in the city, June 7th. So we won't be here Friday, yeah. So, we so we're not going to be here. There will be a special Thursday edition of Drawing Blood. Tune in then. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Go to bloodgame.com if you want an inside scoop on anything that doesn't show up on social media. You get a kind of an inside look on that. Uh, too Many Games is June 21st to the 23rd. We'll all be there. The whole staff will be there if you guys are in what area is that? Pennsylvania. It's like in the Pennsylvania area. area. And keep a lookout for that Edge magazine. We'll be posting about that shortly. And that's all our promotion stuff. But again, guys, thanks again. Uh, we really enjoy doing these things. We enjoy talking to the industry, and we enjoy drawing in front of you guys. So thanks for tuning in each week, watching us fumble around doing our little studio thing here. Uh, until next Thursday, we'll talk to you then. Bye, guys. See you guys. <laughs>